Hello everyone, my name is Ashishel Charles from the Irvington Public Library. Today, I'll be reading The Empress and the Silkworm by Lily Toy Hong. Nearly 5,000 years ago, Huang Di, known as the Yellow Emperor, ruled the ancient land of China. He and his young wife, Si Ling Shi, lived in an enormous palace with a golden roof. Its pillars were carved with the image of the mighty dragon, symbol of the emperor's strength. Around the palace were gardens and a vast grove of mulberry trees. The empress loved to stroll through the gardens each morning from time to time, she caught a glimpse of the phoenix resting upon the palace roof. Everyone knew that to see this bird was a blessing, a sign of good fortune. On one such lucky morning, Si Ling Shi was enjoying the shade of the mulberry trees when her maidservant arrived, carrying a tray of delicious mooncakes and hot tea. Tea time, she sang as she placed the tray at Si Ling Shi's feet. Oh, they smell so wheat, sweet, said the empress. I can't wait to taste one. She picked up a cake, but as she reached for her teacup, plop, something splashed right into it. Aya, screamed the maidservant, wrinkling her nose in disgust. What is it? asked Si Ling Shi. I don't know, said the maidservant, shuddering. I will bring you a fresh cup. No, wait, the empress said. She leaned forward to examine the tea. Her eyes grew large with excitement as she saw the, what was floating on top. It was small and round and white. It was a cocoon. She had seen the tiny worms in the mulberry trees spin these tight blankets around themselves. In the hot tea, the cocoon was beginning to unwind. She took it out and pulled the loose end gently. The cocoon seemed to be made of a fine, shiny thread. Please, your highness, the maidservant begged, leave that worming thing alone. The empress did not reply, but began to uncoil the strand. Look, she said, this thread is so light, it's almost invisible. It is like a thread fallen from heaven. Come help me unravel it. From morning to evening, the two unwound the cocoon. They were careful not to break the thread or make a hopeless tangle. As Last, they reached the end. Si Ling Shi held the silvery thread up in the moonlight. See how it glistens, she exclaimed. But it is so delicate. If we had more strands, we could twist them together to make one thick thread. Go, bring other servants to help us. So through the night, Si Ling Shi and the servants worked, plucking cocoons from the mulberry trees, soaking them in hot tea and unwinding them. Then they joined all the strands into a single fiber. The moon hung low in the sky when Si Ling Shi, exhausted, lay down to rest. While she slept, she had a wonderful dream. She saw the fiery dragon and the proud phoenix rising like the sun. She saw her husband standing among the clouds. He was dressed in a shimmering yellow robe that flowed like the rivers of heaven. The cloth was so beautiful that she knew it could only have been woven from the shining thread of the mulberry cocoons. When she woke, she knew exactly what she was going to do. At noon, there was great excitement at the palace. The ladies of the court had formed a procession a mile long. Each gently held part of the miraculous thread. It took a thousand women just to keep it from touching the ground. A gong was struck. One by one, the ladies of the court entered the room where the emperor sat, surrounded by his advisors. The women paraded the empress's treasure before the throne.
Then Si Ling Shi approached, holding a tray. Upon it were a caterpillar, a mulberry leaf, a cocoon, and a cup of hot tea. What are these things? asked the emperor. And what are your servants carrying? I will show you, most honorable husband, she replied. As the emperor and his advisors watched, she dipped the cocoon into the hot tea. The advisors began to laugh. And this makes the tea taste better, your highness, observed the one with the round belly. Another joked, perhaps it makes the caterpillar taste better. Slowly, the empress began to draw the luscious strand from the cocoon. A hush fell over the court as the strand grew longer. Then Si Ling Shi told the story of her discovery. An advisor with a long beard inspected the tiny worm. Who could imagine, he said, that something so great could come from something so small? Ah, look how the thread shimmers in the light, exclaimed another. It is as fine as smoke, yet strong as bronze, cried a third. Then the round-bellied one said, yes, this is truly wonderful, but why should we concern ourselves with it? The empress told her dream how she had seen the yellow emperor clothed in a robe wo woven from the heavenly thread. For a moment there was silence. Then Huang Di smiled at his wife and said, What a splendid idea! We shall weave a cloth more beautiful than the world has ever seen. Because of this treasure, our kingdom will be as heaven on earth. I command that none outside this land be told the secret of this noble worm and its precious gift. When, with the rising sun, Si Ling Shi went to work overseeing the production of the cloth. Imperial gardeners planted more groves of mulberry trees. Young worms were placed on trays. Each day, each day, fresh leaves were picked and cut to feed them. Royal craftsmen made reels to unwind the cocoons and combine the strands. They built looms to weave the thread into fabric. Many full moons passed before the young empress saw the fruits of her labor. At last, on the morning of the autumn moon festival, a crowd gathered in front of the palace. The great gong sounded and the red liqueur doors burst open. The people gasped as Huang Di stepped out into the light. Wrapped in a billowing robe of radiant yellow, he shone like the sun. It was just as the empress had dreamed. From that day, the fabric was called silk. Soon, Si Ling Shi was known throughout the kingdom as the Lady of the Silkworm. The origin of the heavenly cloth became one of the greatest secrets of all time. For almost 3,000 years, only the Chinese knew about the little worm that fed on mulberry leaves and spun the beautiful magical threads of silk. The end. Thank you everyone for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye!